What kind of hardware would you use if you had to facilitate very, very smooth rotation and maybe even um, high speed rotation, high RPM? What, what hardware could you use to facilitate that rotational motion? You don't want any, any slop or play or wiggle in that motion. You want it to be very precise. What could you use? Well, the answer is ball bearings. And there are a few different kinds of ball bearings that we're going to look at. Um, here, this one is, is maybe the most common type of ball bearing. It's just a, a round ball bearing. There are balls inside of this, and you can't see them because they're, they're shielded. This is a shielded style ball bearing. Uh, but, but in here, all the way around, there are little balls that allow this... Uh, to, to spin really smoothly and with very high precision. Uh, uh, this, uh, some anatomy of a ball bearing, this is, this is called the outer race, R-A-C-E, and this is the, the inner race. And the, the two, the inner race and the outer race rotate relative to each other. So if, if I kind of hold that inner race and pre prevent it from moving, I can spin the outer race uh, likewise, if I hold the outer race, I can spin the inner race, and it's a very, very smooth, very precise rotational motion. There's no wobble or play in there. And you typically use a bearing on a very high precision uh, shaft or axle or rod. So this particular ball bearing has a one half inch diameter uh, inner race. And so it's meant to be used with a shaft that has a half inch diameter. And this shaft does have a half inch diameter. So if we slide this on, it's a very nice smooth fit. In fact, I would say that this shaft is maybe even a little bit undersized. I would, I would want it to be a little bit tighter. Uh, I can feel just a, a small hair of, of play, of wiggle in there. So uh, ideally this shaft is going to be a little bit bigger and when I say a little bit bigger you know we might be talking less than one thousandth of an inch bigger maybe five ten thousandths of an inch bigger or seven or eight ten thousandths of an inch bigger something like that anyway it's pretty close and you, you can see that you know it f facilitates this really nice smooth motion you use bearings a lot with um, I don't know uh, axles that are you know turning in gears or, or something like that in fact We're going to look at this in a CAD video, but this is uh, an actual little uh, gearbox that, that we designed. You can see we've got a few different types of gears in there. We won't go over the exact gears, but they're all, this, this motion is very smooth. It re, there's very little resistance. I'm, I'm spinning this uh, shaft and it doesn't require hardly any force, hardly any torque. It just sp spins really smoothly and everything's very smooth, very, very well controlled. Um, and uh, the, the reason we use ball bearings in here is because we have two gears that need to, to mesh. Their teeth need to mesh together. Actually, two sets of gears. Spur gears over here, and over here we've got some, some uh, bevel gears or, or miter gears. Um, and uh, gears require very... Um, very accurate relative placement, relative, you know, one gear to the other. And if they're, they're not placed extremely uh, precisely, then the, the gears will wear faster, they'll, they'll uh, make more noise, and they'll, they'll transmit less, uh, less torque. So it's important that gears are, are placed very, very precisely relative to one another. And uh, the way that you do that is uh, in part by using ball bearings. Uh, so you can see here we've got a ball bearing there and there and then on the other side, it's a little bit harder to see, but there's another ball bearing in here and one in here. And then we have our, our input shaft right here. We've got one ball bearing there and there's a second one that you can't see that's in here and that allows our, our input shaft to move really smoothly. So there's an example of, of how some gears are used. Now there are a few other kind. Uh, I'm sorry, an example of how ball bearings are used. I'll show you a few other examples here. Uh, this guy is a pulley, actually. You can see like that little V groove on there, but you can see the ball bearings inside. You can see them reflecting in the light.
and you know this one spins just like any any ball bearing so there's some bearings in there um, this is a needle roller bearing so instead of balls there are they're, they're basically pins inside there that that uh, spin within a, a cage and here is a part that that we might use with this needle roller bearing just spins on there now of course we, we wouldn't want it to be shifting axially back and forth like that we'd we do something to prevent axial movement and and just you know facilitate some nice rotational movement like that this needle roller bearing is a little bit old and doesn't spin quite as well um, and here is another example this is a one-way bearing and you can see that there's a little a keyway right there a notch and another notch over there oftentimes these these bearings are used with uh, with little keys one half of the key goes into your shaft and the other half of that key goes into the notch in the bearing in the inner or outer inner or outer race and and that locks the inner and outer race relative to whatever it's installed in and so you can see let's see if I get that key up here and the other keyways on the outside you can see that it, it rotates you know no problem in that direction right but if I try to go the other direction it won't move it locks and uh, so these one-way bearings are just another type of bearing that can be used yeah and uh, last thing that we'll look at here uh, this is a, a thrust bearing so the, the the bearings that we've looked at to date or so far um, uh, let's see transmit uh, how do I say this they, they have the rotational motion is around this axis whereas a thrust washer or thrust bearing the rotational motion uh, let's see I guess the rotational motion is the same now I'm not not exactly sure the best way to explain the difference maybe just visually right here are the balls inside this little plastic cage and you have a a metal washer on the bottom and another metal washer on top and uh, let's see this is not necessarily meant to install but um, just to give us something to hold it with you know, that 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 bottom washer is going to stay where it is and the top washer is going to move really smoothly and and you would have something on top of this top washer something that uh, was bearing down on it, putting a load on it, some force on it, but that you wanted to be able to to rotate really smoothly. Um, I guess maybe that's the best way to explain the difference is that with a uh, a thrust washer, your your load is is directed down into those ball bearings like that, you know, whereas uh, down into all of the balls equally in in an equal amount, so you're pushing down on it, whereas uh, this style ball bearing, you, you might have, uh, your bearing might be held uh, in some, I don't know, part, in some housing like that, and you might have a load down in, in this direction, so it's a, a radial load. It's a radial load pushing down on just a few of those balls, whereas the, the thrust bearing is a face load. It's pushing down on, on all of those balls at the same time. So anyway, uh, ball bearings. If you've found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.